In this session, we will discuss list-like objects from genomic ranges. This is another set or another class of objects that you're going to encounter again and again, and it and it needs a short uh, uh, introduction. In genomic ranges, we have a lot of like uh, lists or XX lists where XX is some class. For example, a G ranges list. There's also an integer list and other things. This is basically a normal, uh, is similar to a normal list in R, but a G ranges list is, a, is you can think of as a list where each element is a G ranges. Behind the scene in these list like objects and G ranges, there's some optimization going on that makes them very efficient to compute on. Uh, but for the end user, it also gives a way of making sure that what we are working on contains, where we make sure that everything is kind of of the same kind, for example, a G-Ranges list. So what's the use case for a G-Ranges list? Well, a single G-Range could be, for example, describing the exons of a transcript. And let's say we have a gene. The gene has multiple transcript and each transcript has multiple exons. It's, it's very natural to think of the gene structure for one specific gene as being encoded in a G-Ranges list or a list of G-Ranges. Let's uh, load the packets and uh, construct an example. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm uh, basically constructing two G ranges, one on chromosome one, one on chromosome two, and now I'm gonna uh, do a G ranges list. Where I'm just gonna put them in. I'm gonna give them names. Now this is gonna be a named list. And now we have a tree ranges list. Pretty simple. It looks and feels a little bit like a list. We can uh, we can uh, subset it uh, with the first one, which is a G ranges list of object of length one. We can use the double bracket as we, as we know from normal lists. We can use the name and all the all the usual uh, uh, things from lists. We can also think of this as one really long G ranges. So let's say, for example, we want to uh, run the start or the start access on this. What do we get out of this? Well, we get a list or an integer list where we get this, where we, for each element, we have the start vector for the course for, 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 for the, for the G ranges inside that element. In the same way we have end, we can do seek names. Uh, and so on and so forth. It's very appealing to uh, think about using things like uh, apply, uh, ill apply and is apply, uh, and that's very worthwhile. Uh, there's uh, one type of apply we uh, use, I use very often with two ranges lists, that's like figuring out how long are the G ranges in each of them. And there's a convenience function that is a lot faster than using is apply called element uh, length. So element length just tells us how long are each of the element. We have four ranges in each of them. It's highly useful. It's much, much faster than doing, let's say, is apply, uh, comma length. You're not going to be able to see that because these are really pretty small objects. But for very, very big uh, lists, there's a huge uh, speed difference there. There's something in uh, in G ranges that is being introduced that are called endo applies. And endo applies has a fancy name for a very simple operation. It's applying a function to a G ranges list that results in a new G ranges list. So there's a lot of standard G ranges uh, functions that we can use in G ranges list. For example, we can shift uh, everything by 10. And this is an example of an into apply. We take a G ranges list in and a G ranges list comes out. We can use find overlaps. And here uh, the situation is a little uh, uh, different. Let's uh, look at the output and explain it. So find overlaps thinks of the G ranges list as having two elements. And we have an, we have an element we have an overlap between the first element if any of the ranges inside that element overlaps. So now I'm really doing overlap between 
a, G, a whole G ranges and a single range. Um, and I'm gonna count it as an overlap if any of my ranges in my G ranges overlap uh, uh, a range in GR2. Uh, in the same way, we can do find overlaps between the two G ranges list. This is not too interesting. Everything hits each other. But uh, this is kind of a, a, a very natural uh, way of uh, using find overlaps for G ranges lists, but it's a little bit different from what happens with G ranges. This is also usually what you want to do if you want to say overlap a transcript with a, a chip seek peak or a read. Uh, we are not necessarily interested in uh, exactly which exon overlaps it, we just want to know does some part of the exons overlap a given genomic region. 